Welcome back to the Kitchen of Vivacious Dish. I'm Chef Catherine and I'm excited to be making a 100% organic and plant-based dish for you today. I wanted to start by talking with you a little bit about a amazing program in San Diego. It's called Good Neighbor Gardens and the premise is Neighbors Feeding Neighbors. So I have this great CSA box and inside this week we have some beautiful beets and some lettuce, which we're gonna play with today, and some avocado as well. And so what's cool about this program is that all of the produce in this box was grown in raised bed gardens within five miles of where we are here today in San Diego. So if you're interested in hyper-local produce, definitely check them out. And I'm gonna show you how to turn all of this into some delicious beet burgers today. So to get started, let me just show you. I have two onions, one's red and one is yellow. We have a sweet potato and I have some cauliflower. And then we have some spices here and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with all of that. But let's begin by getting our ingredients prepped. So first, we're gonna use a little bit of the yellow onion. This is gonna get mixed with the cauliflower to do a riced cauliflower. This is part of the base ingredients for our beet burgers. So I'm just gonna cut the ends off the onion and chop it into a quarter and take off the skin. Okay, that's all set. And then for the cauliflower, this is gonna be riced in our automatic processor here. So all I'm gonna do here is chop this into fairly small pieces, about three inches in size. And once the cauliflower is rice, we want to have one cup and a quarter of cauliflower. So now we have our pieces ready to go. These automatic food processes are awesome if you want to do any sort of grating. And you can see that on the processor itself, I have a grater attachment. So this just hooks up right into the processor. And we get it set up and ready to go our little gauge out. We might want to cut the onion just a bit more. And then we're just going to take this and chop it down. So when we say that we're ricing the cauliflower, essentially we're just grating it. So now you can see that we have our cauliflower rice. It's made into some nice fine granules here. It's a little messy, but it's fun to play with. So you can see that it's just this beautiful, soft, delicate, very similar in shape and size to rice. And that's what it means when we do rice cauliflower. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna steam it just to get it soft and tender. Um, about five to 10 minutes. You can see now it's still a little bit al dente and we're gonna just get it a bit softer to work with it. And I'm gonna just saute this with a little bit of coconut oil. We're doing it in uh, cast iron, so mostly it's just to help it from not sticking to the pan. If you're using something that's more non-stick, you don't really need to worry about adding any oil in this. So we have about a teaspoon of coconut oil heated here. Not too much, just to coat the pan. And we're just gonna take all of our rice cauliflower and dump it in. And then we're just going to toss to coat to make sure that oil gets on there. It smells really nice and good. You get that nice sweet cauliflower with a little bit of the onion. We got a little onion skin in here, so we'll pull that out. And now that this is coated, we're just going to take it and cover it and steam it for five to ten minutes until it's soft and tender. So now that we have our cauliflower steaming on the stove, the next step is to work with our sweet potato. You can use a yam as well, or also butternut squash, whatever your preference is. So usually I would use the skin on an organic sweet potato. I think it adds extra nutrient density, but for this case, we need to be, have it be really pliable. So I'm gonna actually peel this. So we'll peel our potato. You can see on a true sweet potato that the flesh is white, but in any of your yams um, or purple sweet potatoes are gonna end up with different colors. And then once we have our potato peeled, 
We're just gonna chop it into some small pieces. We're just steaming this. We need to have it soft and workable. Um, you can also roast it if you want, although it does take more time. So this is kind of a quick prep version. So we have our potato pieces about this size, so a couple inches in size. And with these, I'm just gonna put them in a steamer basket on the stove and to cook until they're fork tender. So we have our potatoes in a basket. I'm using a steamer basket here. You can also do it in a platform steamer that's an attachment on your pot, or you could also boil them, just depending on what your preferences are. I like steaming them because it helps to keep them out of the water, so mo most of the nutrients will stay in the potatoes. So we're gonna cover that and get it ready to go. In the meantime, our rice is cooking away. You can see the difference in color as it starts to cook and get soft. It's turning from kind of this brighter orange because we're working with a golden cauliflower to a little bit softer of a tone. So we need a couple more minutes on this until all of it gets nice and soft. And if you start to find that it's getting a little brown, um, you can just turn your heat down. Okay, now that we have our vegetables on the stove getting cooked up, we're gonna start working with our beets. You can see we have some beautiful beets from Good Neighbor Gardens, like I mentioned. We're gonna cut the tops off of these um, and these tops are delicious, steamed or sauteed. You can mix them up with some onion, caramelized, and either some coconut oil or lard or ghee, pretty much your fat of choice, and that's a delicious and nutrient-dense way to use the greens. But today, I'm gonna save those, and we're just gonna use the bulbs. And if your beets have dirt on them, which sometimes they do, it is a good idea to wash them, just give them a quick rinse, and then we're gonna peel these. We're gonna peel our beets. Just get that outer layer of skin off of them. These are just beautiful. I love that deep dark red color, it's gorgeous. And we're gonna need about a cup total of beets. So you're probably gonna end up wanting to use about two to three beet bulbs depending on their size. And once we have them peeled and nice and clean, I'm just gonna trim off any sort of edges on them that have a little bit of extra fur or shape on them. So just bring a really nice smooth bulb to work with. And then these, like the cauliflower rice, are just gonna run through the grater to get a nice fine grate on the beet itself. Okay, so we're just gonna run the beets through the processor. Okay, so now I have your beets. They're all ground up in there. And then I'm also going to run just a little bit of minced onion, red onion in here. I'm going to just do it in the food presser. You can also chop by hand if you like, but we'll just keep it simple. And you really just need a little bit. This is just going to add some nice flavor to our beet burgers. I just want to show you how you know when the sweet potatoes are done. You want them to be fork tender. So let's go check it out. And you can see that when we stick a fork in the sweet potatoes, it goes in really easily. So these are ready to go. I'm going to take them out of the steamer basket and we're going to mash them to use them. You can also see that I am sauteing up some onions here. We're going to caramelize these in just a little bit of coconut oil. And this is going to go into the toppings for the burgers. So we'll let that go and turn our sweet potatoes off. And we take the potatoes and we're just gonna drain them with our little steamer basket here. Beautiful. And those go into this bowl. So we take our sweet potatoes in a bowl and we're just gonna mash them up. And we wanna use a cup of sweet potatoes, which is pretty much exactly this. So we'll use that. This is putting in with the cauliflower rice. We want a cup and a quarter of the rice cauliflower. And then we're gonna take one cup of our beautiful beets here. Okay, so we're gonna take a cup of our beautiful grated beets. And get some of that good red onion that's mixed in there as well. We're gonna mix that in with our sweet potatoes and our rice cauliflower. And then the spices we're using today, we have cumin, 
coriander, rosemary, salt, and pepper. So sprinkle that on here as well. And then for this, we're gonna use tahini. This is what's gonna help to blend this and hold it all together. You can also use hummus um, or any nut butter. So sunflower butter, almond butter, peanut butter, whatever you like. But my personal taste preference is with tahini. So we're gonna use two tablespoons of tahini and add that in here. And then my hands are pretty heat resistant now with all the cooking, but if you're sensitive to heat, it can be helpful to wait a little bit to mix this up because you're gonna mix it up and make burger patties by hand. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up with our hands to get everything well combined. You can see how beautiful the color is, and it's really like playtime. For any of you who don't like working with meat products, either for ethical or health reasons, you can see that this is just as much fun as getting to blend up any sort of thing that you could ever make. So we're just gonna get that nice and well combined. So now we have our beet burger meat ready to go. You can see it's nice and pliable, and it sticks together well, which is exactly what we want. So you're just gonna take it and form it into perfectly little sized patties. It makes about five patties in total. And if you have extra patties, more than you're gonna need for your current meal prep, you can freeze these as well. Just put a layer of wax paper in between them, pop them in the freezer and they can keep up to six months. So it's great if you make a double batch and have your meals ready to go and then a quick easy burger to fry up whenever you need it. These beautiful onions are getting nice and caramelized. I'm excited about that. So delicious. So now that we have our beet burgers ready, you can see they're in perfect burger form. Beautiful plant-based meal we have going here. We're gonna fry them up in some coconut oil. So let's come over to the stove and I'll show you how. So we have about two tablespoons of coconut oil. It's over medium heat. You don't wanna get it any hotter than that and you want to just enough layer in the bottom so it's going to keep the pan coated for the cooking. So we're going to take our burgers and plop them in. Um, you can hear just a light simmer there. That's the kind of noise that you want. You want your oil hot but not scalding. And then we're going to cook the burgers about four minutes on each side just so they're heated all the way through and have a nice crisp brown layer on the outside of the burger. So we'll let those go. While our burgers cook on the stove, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do our plating today. We're gonna to use romaine lettuce as our buns. You can also use any sort of bun that you desire, but we're grain free in this house, so we're gonna stick with lettuce. So I'm gonna use just two leaves of lettuce. We're just gonna take our leaves and get a nice, flat, large size thing. That's a really good container for the burger. So we're gonna put one leaf on our plate like so. And then I'm gonna spread on a little bit of horseradish organic mustard, just to get some good flavor here. And you can use any toppings that you like. You could use a ketchup or aioli. It really is kind of your preferences in burger prep. But this is one of my favorite ways to top these. So you get some nice Dijon mustard on there. And then I'm also gonna put some hummus on. This is an organic hummus. Um, you can use, like I said, any other toppings that you like. It really just depends. I've done this with a roasted red pepper before that was really delicious. And um, this also kind of helps to keep everything together, which is useful. And then I'm also going to chop up some avocado to just add a little layer on top. And we're going to put our caramelized onions on these guys as well. So this is exactly what you want when you're cooking your beet burgers. You can see that we have enough oil to keep them coated and they're getting just a little bit fried around the edges. That's perfect. And the oil is not boiling or burning. We're getting a little bit of smoke, but we're not above the smoke point where it's starting to cause a lot of smoke. And that's exactly what you want. These probably need about two minutes more on this side and then we'll flip them. Our burgers have been cooking on one side for about four minutes. So we're going to flip them over. And you can see that they're starting to get cooked. There's a little bit of crisp on here. These could probably go a little bit longer, so we'll do one more flip at the end just to get a nice crispy coat on the outside. 
Our burgers are cooked through. They're a little bit crisp on the outside and warm in the middle. That's how we like them. So we're gonna do our plating. I'm gonna put a little bit of the onions we caramelized. You can see that they're a nice golden color here. We're gonna put them down on the base as well. This will help to keep them on, sticking them to some of that hummus there. And I'll bring our burgers over. We're gonna take our beautiful burgers, like I said, nice and crisp. They get a little stuck, just get your spatula underneath them. Beautiful burger here. That goes on top. Put a little bit of sliced avocado with it. You could also put guacamole on these. Like I said, pretty much anything you want, whatever floats your boat in the burger realm. And then we're gonna put our extra romaine leaf on the top. And you'll see that you kind of want to position it on there so you can really grab on and get a hold of your burger. So these are our beautiful beet burgers, 100% grain-free and organic from Vivacious Dish. Look at that beautiful burger. Oh, good. Mm.